My name is Bishop John Sherrington and I'm an Auxiliary Bishop of Westminster. The passage that I've chosen is from the prophet Baruch towards the end of the fifth chapter. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command. For God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I first became more aware of these words on retreat when I was in a room with a picture of a forest and a wooded glade. The sun was shining down, but there was shade in that glade. And under the picture were written these words. They offered consolation and hope. And I could imagine that place of cool and refuge in a forest and the beauty in the midst of the trees. For the people who first heard these words uh, of the prophet Baruch, they were living in exile in Babylon. They'd been taken from Jerusalem and they'd lost everything, their homes, the temple, their liturgy. They were living in a dislocated way in an unfamiliar way, in a strange place. For ourselves, at this time of the coronavirus pandemic, we're living in a strange place. We've lost the familiar, we're finding new routines and patterns, and in our own life of prayer, we're having to adapt and find new ways to pray. Such would have been the same situation for the people in exile in Babylon. No longer could they go to the temple, no longer did they have their familiar patterns of prayer. So we too are looking for new ways to pray as we await the opening of our churches again. And so this text speaks of the way in which God will protect me, he'll protect you, he'll protect us and will shade us from all that causes harm or evil. And that is a message which is full of great hope. We hear the prophet Baruch twice in the liturgy, once on the second Sunday of Advent and also at the Easter Vigil. On the second Sunday of Advent, the liturgy focuses on the coming of John the Baptist. And so Baruch points forward to the coming of John the Baptist the one who will bring light to the people of Israel and light to ourselves. So we find in Baruch, as we find in Isaiah, the following words. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low and the valleys filled up to make level ground so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. Because of the incarnation, we can walk safely in the glory of God. And so this reading points us towards Christ, who is the light, who is our wisdom and who we will be able to follow and therefore find refuge and be led to the Father. At the Easter Vigil, the prophet Baruch is heard in the sixth reading, one that's often left out. But in fact, there again, the sixth reading is pointing us towards the new covenant that God will make with his people. That's the covenant that comes through the death and resurrection of Christ and through the promise of our baptism. As Baruch looked forward to his people being freed from exile, so in the Easter Vigil, we look forward to ourselves being freed from sin and from death. And so Christ becomes our hope. He is the one who fulfills this reading and therefore is the one who can shade us and protect us from everything that is evil. He is the light that leads us towards glory and under the power of the Holy Spirit, he leads us towards the Father in whom we find our peace. May God bless you. And thank you for listening.